this is Mark Billy with the Art of Diesel, where we're all about automotive and diesel efficiency, performance, and independence. So today I'm talking about my work on Ivana, the turbo diesel that I've been working on since I purchased the vehicle. It's an E320 CDI. I purchased the vehicle back in December. It's now March. I've actually done quite a bit of work and have a lot of video material that I need to edit and share with you. But for now, I'm going to be focusing on the intake systems in this vehicle. Now, there are several reasons you would want to modify the intake system. I'm not going to cover the intercooler here, but I'm going to cover the rest of uh, the intake manifold and the pipe that runs up from the intercooler into the intake. One of the major problems with the stock intake system on these diesels is the EGR. And I'll explain why the EGR is a bad thing. EGR stands for exhaust gas return, which in and of itself wouldn't be so bad, except that you also combine it with crankcase ventilation. And because all engines have a little bit of blow-by, a little bit of those expanding gases that make their way down past the rings into the crankcase of the engine, these gases are picked up by a hose and fed into the intake system. Now what happens is that now you've got this, this cloud of oil and some amount of water vapor, but it's mostly uh, oil vapor that is circulating around your system, uh, going through the intercooler and then up that tube into your intake manifold and down into the engine through the intake manifold. And in and of itself, that's not a terrible thing. It does leave slime in the runners. If you do have boost leak, what will happen is that it's often easy to find because it'll look like there's, well, there will literally be oil coming out wherever the boost leak is. You'll see uh, a certain amount of oil dampness around where you've got failed seals. So to some extent that might be helpful, but you really don't want a bunch of oil in the intercooler, but that's another story. The real problem here is that you take the oil vapor and you combine it with EGR. Now, again, on a gasoline engine, it's actually beneficial. It does a lot for reducing nitrous oxide and helps with detonation and other things. On a diesel engine, it's a patently bad idea. And it's because there's a fair amount of soot in a diesel exhaust. And as you recirculate these sooty gases back into your intake, where they mix, what will happen is, again, you've got a, a cloud of oil vapor. It has some moisture and other things in it, but it's primarily oil vapor um, and you introduce these soot particles. And what happens is the oil vapor will condense onto those little particles and over time on your intake those little particles start sticking to the walls over time. And what happens on a diesel engine over time is your passages effectively get smaller and smaller and smaller because of all the caked up gunk that builds up around the outside. It Again, it's really bad for a diesel engine. It builds up in your intake runners and the plenum, and it winds up caking things up down around the intake, um, around the valves in the intake side of the head. Very similar problem to the one that people run into on modern direct injection gasoline engines where there's nothing to clean up the gunk and so you get all kinds of gunk around the valves and stuff. This is a bad idea in a diesel engine and we want to get rid of it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So in this video I'm going to show you a number of modifications I've done. We're going to get rid of swirl veins, we're getting rid of the EGR, and we're plugging up unnecessary gaps in the intake system. So, so follow along and um, you'll see how I made the modifications for Ivana's intake system. All right, to get started, we're going to remove the intake manifolds, swirl veins. And first I took out all of the screws. Unfortunately, I did not get good footage of this, um, but I took out the screws and that allowed me to remove the veins. The veins were brazed into place. They're in the round ports on the uh, intake manifold you see here. You have to actually crack the braze to get them out. And once those have been removed, um, you can actually just pull out on the shafts and they'll come right out. Now you do have some tubes that are openings to the outside air that uh, will need to be plugged later. So next I went to clean this thing and I stuck it in an ultrasonic cleaner that I managed to purchase on Surplus. You can see that the mixer tube is that cylindrical object I dropped in there. Here's the problem. The ultrasonic waves don't really get inside the intake manifold runners very well here. So next 
I pulled out the mixer. It did get fairly clean and the first thing I need to do is take out the mixing tube which is where the EGR gases come into the intake gases. Um, so I take the Dremel tool and I put one of the composite cutting heads on and I just keep working at it until I've cut that thing out. Next I go in and just start cleaning it up. I want the flow to be as smooth as possible. I've already gotten rid of a huge obstruction in there but I still want to get everything cleaned up and as smooth as possible. So next I go to a little drum sander and work my way around that. And I make sure to scuff it up real good for the braise that's coming. Next, I use this little device. This is another ultrasonic cleaner. I submerge the intake in a bath of water, and by putting this thing inside the runners, I actually get ultrasonic waves that go up and down the runners, and sometimes I put it on the left or the right side of the plenum. The bottom line is that the ultrasonic waves are inside the tubes and do more to clean it. This actually worked fairly well. Next, I picked up an inexpensive borescope off Amazon. It's got its own lighting, and when you push it down the tubes, um, when you've been cleaning, it allows you to see where the gunk can still be found. This is a valuable tool. Um, it's cheap, you can pick them up for 20 bucks. There are certain points, low points in the runners where the gunk wanted to continue to stick. I put some mineral spirits in there and brush. I found if I bent the the wire handle into kind of a spiral shape, I could get deeper down into the runners. And then after I did all the runners, I went back, got my power washer, and blasted them out in the driveway um, you know, with high pressure water. And what I had to do is I had to cycle through this process multiple times where I kept power washing it, hitting it with mineral spirits, etc., until the intake manifold was fairly clean. Um, definitely a lot cleaner than it was when I bought it, thanks to the EGR system caking everything up. Here you can see that it's actually fairly clean in these images, and I've cleaned out the inside of the plenum that the runners go to. All right, here I'm roughing up some aluminum tubing of an appropriate size. I think I use 3 8 inch tubing. I mark it to the right length, cut it off, and then I drop it down the tube where I can braise it later. Now, because I need braise material to go around the outside, I'll probably go a little smaller next time. But anyhow, once they're all inserted, I can then start heating it up. Now, I was just using a propane torch. One of the problems I ran into is that this intake manifold is one hell of a big aluminum heat sink. And with propane, I could not get hot enough. So as you can see here, I switched to the yellow tank, which is MAP gas. It's a little bit hotter than propane, but over time I was actually able to get hot enough to get the um, to get the braze to start flowing. And here you can see me pushing braze down into that gap. And you want to get that uh, gap as filled as possible. You don't want it just on the top. You want it down in the gaps. And you really have to keep heating and heating and heating. And toward the end here, I finally get to a point where the metal is, braze metal is now liquid and I'm really working it into the gap and um, getting a really good braise here. Although this was the first one I did, it probably still wasn't the best braise. My braises get a little bit better over time and I wound up coming back and redoing this first one later. Yeah, so I wound up doing a number of them. Here's kind of the last one where I've kind of got it down to more of an art. And as we get into this, what you're going to see is that there's kind of a pool of braise and I keep heating it. And what happens is the braise seems to disappear because it's, it's working its way down into the gaps between the uh, intake metal and the aluminum plug that I put in there. And you just keep working it and keep letting it work its way down into those gaps. And um, the secret here is don't be afraid to get the thing hot. You're not going to get hot enough with the MAP gas to melt aluminum just hot enough to melt the braise. You can hear, see I was even trying to work it in the gap there. But eventually I wound up with a pretty good um, pretty good braise here. Anytime I saw a gap, I would just go ahead and touch it and put a little bit more of the braise in that area. Uh, keep filling it in and keep it warm for a while. And this makes for a pretty darn good plug. I had to go back, as I said, and redo the first one because it wasn't as good as these later ones were. It also helped that over time the entire piece 
wound up being fairly warm, which really helped. All right, so next I go back to my mixer and I'm going to put a metal plug in here as well. I'm scuffing up the areas where the braze needs to meet. I've made this plug out of half inch aluminum uh, billet, a half inch aluminum plate actually, and I tapered the edges in order to allow the braze in. Um, later, well, what I would do if I did it again is I would increase the taper to try and get more braze down into the gap. I think that's one of the secrets I've learned with this is that you need to have a, a pretty decent amount of gap to make certain that the braise gets down there in there and you get good hot joints. And again, make certain you get the parent material nice and hot. Don't just stand there with the torch and just cook the braise. You need to get the parent material hot. Next I was going to install this and first I looked at the intake manifold and realized that the walls were too thin so I decided to tap and drill this half inch piece of aluminum that I put in there. It gets a half inch tap and um, so I did a pilot drill and then the final size drill then I follow that with the actual tap which is a you know eighth MPT tap use a little bit of lube in there just to you know it was like cutting oil and um, you'll see I actually used a gear wrench a gear wrench the right size with a 12 point inside will actually fit nicely over those. Um, you'll also see here and there where I actually touch it with um, a conical bit on the drill just to clean up edges. And anyhow, once I've got it so that this fitting for the pressure gauge, um, the boost gauge, um, fits nicely, I'm basically done. I get it bolted down in there, make sure everything fits, check it to see that I like that that it's down in there and working well. Um, then I take it back off because I'm going to paint this thing eventually. So yes, here, now I'm starting to paint. I spent a lot of time cleaning up the surfaces first and start with a very light mist. Now here, you're not gonna see any of the gaps in time between the coats. It's because of my editing, but the bottom line is that you wanna hit it with multiple coats, a little bit light, a little bit at a time and hit it from all kinds of angles because it's a very complex shape. It's easy to miss surfaces. Here I've got it upside down so that when I flip it over, if any paint comes off from me setting it down right side up, it's you know on the bottom instead of the top. So I paint the mixer and the manifold. Don't tell anybody that's a Ford blue. <laughs> but I happen to like blue. I don't think there's anything about the blue that makes you say Ford unless you're a real Ford aficionado. And nice thing is you can find this paint anywhere. All right, so here it is complete. One of the things I want to point out here is there's another thing that I really didn't capture, um, which is that there's a resonator in the bare aluminum up pipe. This is what goes from the hose that comes out of the intercooler and brings the compressed air up to the mixer that then goes into the intake manifold at the top of this picture. Um, there's a resonator there and I did the same thing there that I did to the mixer. I cut a plug of half inch aluminum and brazed it in there. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to capture that on uh, video. But anyhow, this these parts are ready to be reinstalled back on the car. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. Fire, fire, fire.